In the previous section, we learned how to easily change how transactions are propagated and prioritized by the network. We're almost done. In this final section, we're ready to configure our chain specifications, including designating what gets included in the Genesis block, before finally deploying our completed blockchain. At the end, I'll show you how to interact with your blockchain using a JavaScript user interface that's also provided for you out of the box with Substrate. Let's now step into the node subdirectory within source to find the chain spec file. This is where you declare a lot of the chain specifications within Substrate. Now, when you deploy your chain in the CLI, you have the choice of deploying to various environments including the dev mode, or deploying to a local testnet. As you can see in the configurations here, each environment actually lets you build your initial chain specs according to how you want it. Here, for example, we're including some initial user accounts within these deployments. In particular, you can build the entire Genesis configuration in this function here called testnet Genesis. This is where we want to insert our transaction outputs vector to be built into Genesis UTXOs by the declare storage macro. Similar to tests, at this point, we're quite familiar with how to do this already. So let's go ahead and implement it. First, let's pass in some seed accounts like Alice and Bob, which can eventually own these UTXOs. Within the development setup, we know that we're going to want to put in a Genesis set of pub keys that own the Genesis UTXOs. Similar to the input parameter above, this will be a vector of keys. We can use the function get from seed, designating the signature to get the public key from the seed phrase Alice. Similarly, let's construct Bob's seed phrase as well. Oh, and these should be commas. Let's copy over the same for the local testnet deployment. And of course, in testnet genesis, Let's change the function signature to expect these new input UTXO owners. Let's call these owners those who are endowed with UTXOs, which as we indicated above, will be a vector containing types, which are SR25519 public keys. Underneath the pseudo configuration, let's specify our UTXO configuration. So following the same syntax, we're designating a UTXO config, which if you recall, will be expecting Genesis UTXOs, which will be a vector of transaction outputs. Let's go ahead and construct this vector of transaction outputs. And I want to give one of value 100 to Alice and one of value 100 to Bob. So to do that, let's go ahead and iterate over the vector containing Alice and Bob, making sure to map a corresponding transaction output of value 100 in the type value to their respective pub keys. after doing the right type conversions before finally collecting it into a vector of Genesis UTXOs. There is one last critical step. So back in lib.rs, as we construct the runtime and include our UTXO module, we need to pass in config here as well. Otherwise, our runtime construction won't know that there are Genesis configurations that also take place in the chain specs for this UTXO runtime. With our Genesis configurations all set up and our logic fully implemented, we are finally ready 
to build our project and deploy our UTXO Bitcoin blockchain. Let's flip back to our terminal and compile and build our first release. And let's decide to do this in dev mode. So in your root directory, the first thing you're going to want to do is initialize your Wasm build environment. We've created a script that helps you do this easily. So to execute it, just run scripts and the bash file init.sh. Next, you're going to want to go ahead and build your Wasm and native code by running cargo build dash dash release. This will save the binary executable format into our target directory here. This step may take a couple minutes to run. So at this point, go grab a well-deserved coffee and we can come back. We're now ready to start our node and start producing some blocks. In a new terminal, run the command target release UTXO workshop. And we want to run this in the dev environment. Right away, you can see that our blockchain has started and it started to produce some blocks. At the moment, we're on block number two, which has just been imported. Let's pause our block production for a minute as I walk you through the UI tool that we'll be using next. In this next part, I'll walk you through a UI demo where you get to interact with your new UTXO implementation. If you find yourself getting lost in any of these next steps, you can always follow along or get the necessary code snippets in our Substrate Developer Hub slash UTXO dash workshop. As you can see, we've already run these initial setup steps. Out of the box, in addition to the Substrate Framework implementation in Rust itself, Substrate also comes with a provided UI. Let's flip over to the Polkadot JavaScript frontend. And at the same time, you're going to want to go ahead and restart your node. So automatically, you'll notice that the client is now connected to your local node. If not, you can set that configuration manually by going into the settings menu, the general tab, and selecting local node and configuring the defaults for the local node in all of the other settings. There is one more step that we need to do to configure our front end for our blockchain implementation. Inside the developer tab, you actually need to go and declare the custom data types that we've created in our implementation. Since the JS client cannot automatically infer the custom data types that we created, like transaction output, transaction, and transaction input in the UTXO module, we're going to have to define these objects ourselves. Take a moment to paste in the following implementation as I have done. One more setup step. Inside the developer tab in settings, we want to declare the custom data types for this polkadot.js tool. Since the JavaScript client cannot automatically infer these custom data types that we have implemented in our UTXO module, so take a minute to paste in exactly this declaration as I have done here. Specifically, we want to declare what a value, transaction input, transaction output, and transaction types are for this client. Once you have done so, go ahead and click Save, ensuring that your custom types have been added. Great, we're now ready to demo your implementation. The first thing we want to do is check our chain state. And we want to confirm that Alice indeed has the 100 UTXO that we seeded her with at Genesis. So in chain state, select our UTXO module. And the storage value we want to look into is our UTXO store. Now I've already pre-computed this UTXO Genesis hash for you, and it's as follows. Again, if you want to simply copy this value and follow along the demo, you can find this in Substrate Developer Hub in the README for this workshop. Let's go ahead and query the chain. Fantastic. Great. So notice that this Genesis UTXO does exist, and it has value 100. We can also check that this UTXO indeed belongs to Alice's pub key. 
Next, let's do a simple demo where we try to spend Alice's UTXO, giving a value of 50 from this UTXO to Bob. To do that, let's head over to the Extrinsics menu where we can submit transactions. It actually doesn't matter who the sender account in this case is, because if you recall, we're submitting a SIG script within the transaction input variable itself. So again, let's pick our UTXO module and we want to invoke the spend transaction. In the UI, there are now fields that we can fill in where we can designate the transaction parameters. Again, I've already pre-computed a lot of this for you offline, so I'll be copying in some pre-computed values. For the out point, we want to reference that Genesis UTXO. For the SIG script, I actually used a helper tool in the toolbox here given to me in this UI, where I had Alice sign over this transaction with this SIG script field as all zeros. And this was the resulting hex that I received. For the value, let's put in 50 since Alice wants to send Bob a UTXO of value 50. And I derived that this is Bob's pub key. So let's submit this as a unsigned transaction. And we see that this transaction has successfully finalized. We sent it as an unsigned transaction because, as you recall, with UTXO or Bitcoin blockchains, the proof is already in the SIG script input. We don't need to rely on any notion of accounts sending signed transactions. Great. And finally, we just want to verify that our new transaction has succeeded. So again, in our chain state, let's select our UTXO module and examine our UTXO store. I've also computed the hash of the newly generated Bob's UTXO, which happens to be this hash here. And let's just query the state. Great, so we're able to verify that Bob indeed has a new UTXO of value 50. Also, just to sanity check, we can verify Alice's Genesis UTXO to verify that this doesn't exist and that it has indeed been destroyed. I'll leave it to you to explore a lot of other cool functions that you get with this JavaScript UI, including this toolbox here. And congratulations! You've built and deployed a Bitcoin-like blockchain from scratch using the Substrate framework. And hopefully throughout this workshop, you got a sense of a lot of the places where Substrate is easily hot swappable. Over the past few hours, you learned how to change a blockchain's underlying ledger model. You changed the defaults to make your blockchain more permissionless, anonymous, and even gasless. In fact, similar to what we did here today, in the future, you can implement any fundamental token model that you want on your chain. You also learned how to change how your transaction prioritization logic works to handle UTXO race conditions that Bitcoin still suffers from and you were able to do so with very little code. You learned how to change your validator incentive scheme and how to enable gasless transaction rewards. And thus, you were able to change the underlying economics of your chain and potentially solving some transaction volume issues during peak hours, which is common of blockchains. You learned how to easily configure your Genesis block and you were able to deploy a fully working blockchain and interact with it in a matter of minutes. And finally, hopefully you were able to pick up that Rust as a language itself, which is again what Substrate Framework is built on, lends itself very well to helping you handle issues. And it was almost as if it was designed to build blockchains. Hopefully this tutorial has convinced you to build on Substrate or migrate your current blockchain ideas on top of Substrate. We've only scratched the tip of the iceberg in this tutorial, and perhaps in a future tutorial, we'll teach you how to turn this current implementation, which by default is on a proof of stake chain, into a proof of work implementation so that we can mirror Bitcoin a lot more closely. If you have any questions at all, you can always reach us 24 7 via our Riot. You can access our Substrate Technical channel here to reach us. Or feel free to direct message me on Twitter. I am at NC. ZHU. If you've made it this far, thank you for taking the time to check this out. 
I look forward to hearing from you and hearing your feedback.